Hello and welcome to a new video, and welcome to a mini-series that I've been waiting to make for a very long time. So obviously the Switch is coming out in a few days now, uh, and I'm really excited personally, I don't know about you, but I just wanted to kind of live in the present for a moment and just take a look at what you can play right now on the Wii U, um, because obviously it's on its way out. It is honestly my favorite console that I have ever used, which is kind of a crazy statement, I know, to some, because, you know, the Wii U hasn't necessarily been an incredibly successful console, but for me personally, just owning the system, I have enjoyed playing the games on it more than I've enjoyed playing games on almost any other machine, even if there are games that I prefer on other machines, I like the Wii U and how uh, I can play games. I find the gamepad really comfortable even. A lot of people don't uh, like it that much. They say it's clunky and heavy. Honestly, it's like lighter than uh, an iPad was at the time when it came out. And I just, I love the way it fits in my hands. Uh, also, personally, I know a lot of people have a problem with this uh, shelf up to these bumpers. Um, and that is very understandable. It's a very large gap to have to cross, but I've got long fingers, so I, I've never that's never bothered me. So yeah, I think it's just a really comfortable, really cool piece of hardware, and I decided to take a look because it's got some great games on it. Uh, it I think in the future we'll start to occupy that space that the Dreamcast and the GameCube occupy now, where they're kind of looked back on uh, as systems that have just great games on them. Uh, that, you know, not enough people play it at the time. So, uh, without further ado, let's get on to it. So, initially I was thinking of doing a top 10, uh, but then, I don't know, I felt like I was leaving out too many games, so then I had to do a top 20, and then uh, the way things turned out, you're left with this top 30. So, uh, starting us off at number 30, uh, we have... Uh, a downloadable game, I have them written down on these little pieces of paper, uh, Futuridium EPD. Now, this game was in the first Wii U Weekly, if you remember, back in May of last year. And I did not know it was coming out until like a couple of days before it did. And when I played it, it was just such a great surprise, because it was really fun, and it just did a very simple concept very well. Uh, it's kind of similar to Star Fox on the SNES uh, in graphical style and in the way it plays, only it's a bit more almost grid-based, I'd nearly say, even though it's a 3D game. Uh, what basically happens is you move with the D-pad and you can really go, only go up and down and left and right. There's no three-dimensional movement. Uh, and that is all so that you have these very precise movements uh, to get around this ship, because basically all you are is doing is flying around these really simplistically designed, but nonetheless very elegant, uh, spaceships. And you're just shooting these blue cubes. Uh, when you shot them all, you move on to the next stage. And it's kind of got that very arcadey feel, uh, which is nice. I also love the score for this game. It's just got a very catchy uh, electronica music. Uh, and it does some interesting stuff with it. And I still actually have some of the tunes like, playing in my head as I'm talking about this. Like, I can just, I can picture them now. Um, so yeah, Futuridium, without a doubt, one of the most surprising games. Um, it did also feature alongside Kick and Fennec, which unfortunately did not make this list. That's possibly an honorable mention, I guess. Uh, but it just didn't quite make the cut. Uh, so moving on to our next game, we have uh, The Swapper. Uh, some people may be surprised to see this game uh, come this low, some people may be surprised uh, as they've never even heard of this game. So basically what the Swapper is, it is a puzzle game where you can create clones of yourself. Uh, and the developers use this in a lot of very interesting ways. So the idea is, you know, you can make up to four clones of yourself, meaning there's five of you on the screen in total, and you all move in unison. And it's about manipulating that core mechanic so that you can solve these kind of uh, logic physics puzzles. Uh, and that's kind of very interesting to me, at least. Uh, it's also got this beautiful art style. Um, basically what the developers did was they made uh, the kind of the spaceship 
and the characters and everything in clay and then they took photos of them and used photogrammetry to put them into the game and it gives this world just a real grit and a real kind of like tangible feel to it. Uh, it's also very ominous and it's got a very intriguing story that sometimes borders on the pretentious but it, it's just, it, it's okay for me. Um, I, I, I like the way it, that these mechanics that they've set up, uh, they kind of use them to kind of convey the message of uh, the game. It's all a lot of very high-minded stuff about transhumanism and stuff. Uh, so if you're into stuff like that, you might be interested in this game. Or if you're just interested into physics-based puzzle games, uh, it's also very interesting in that way. So definitely the Swapper is one that is worth checking out, in my opinion. Uh, so coming in here at number uh, 28, we have uh, a game that will probably surprise a lot of you. Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Um, yeah, this is kind of a weird one. So a lot of people might say it's just a Mario and Sonic game. I mean, like think about like the, the one they made in 2009 and everything. It's just all like shaking with Wiimotes and stuff. And yeah. Uh, Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, don't get me wrong, it's not a crazy impressive game. Um, uh, even I said in my review back in my Wii U Weekly of it, uh, I said that the game kind of lacked a bit of uh, budget and I think that uh, there were a lot of constraints on the developers because you could see there were a lot of things that they kind of took out that were in previous games and so it ended up being kind of a mediocre package. But each, some of the mini games have just turned out so fun, and I played them a lot in multiplayer with friends and stuff, and that was just really enjoyable. I just really enjoy a good multiplayer game that's really easy to get into as well, because as I said in my review, all the control schemes for all the games, um, they usually uh, require a directional input and then a max of three buttons, so you can literally teach any game to any person really quickly. Uh, and that is something that I really like about it. Uh, it could be interesting when uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics comes to the Switch. Uh, you might see people, you'll be able to just hand them a Joy-Con and you'll be able to very quickly explain how the game works and everything. Uh, and that meant, you know, it removed a lot of friction. Now, some of the games did suffer, but some games were very fun and I really enjoyed uh, the cycling in particular. I thought that was quite fun, even though there was only one track. Once again, you see, there were a lot of constraints budget-wise and everything, but personally, I just really enjoyed what was there, uh, and I hope this team, the next time they're given uh, a crack at a game like this, they can actually be given a little more scope. Uh, so that is Mario and Sonic. It's a bit of a surprise, I know, but we are where we are. So, moving on, we have Coming in here at number 27, uh, Paper Mario Color Splash. Uh, this was one of the better games that came out in 2016. 2016 was a bit of a dry year for the Wii U. Um, but basically, this game kind of shocked everyone because uh, Sticker Star had a very mediocre reception. Um, some people absolutely detested the game and said it wasn't a great RPG and everything. Uh, and Paper Mario Color Splash kind of turned that on its head. And I, uh, you even see. Um, if you've ever watched Game Explain, uh, Andre Seekers, who's uh, one of the guys who works there, uh, was reviewing the game and he absolutely detested Sticker Star. He said it was one of the worst games that he'd ever played and he never wanted to replay it ever again. And yet, he said this was one of the best games he played in 2016. Now granted, he also uh, even he admitted that he hadn't played many games in 2016, but he did say it was actually a very good game. It's got a beautiful art style. I think they've really gone all out with the paper aesthetic in this one. Uh, it's also got some quite funny writing. Uh, I don't know if it's quite, you know, falling off your seat laughing, but it is funny. Um, and the RPG mechanics are all right. Uh, there's a couple too many steps, in my opinion. Um, you have to, like, paint the cards and then throw the cards and everything, and that's kind of a bit of a palaver uh, and for a combat system that is not particularly deep. But just because of the world and everything, I think it makes up for it. I think the game overall 
is one of the best looking Wii U games, but it's just also just really fun to wander around that world, talk to people, see what they're going to say, um, and it's just fun to progress through the story and everything. So uh, that's Paper Mario Color Splash. Uh, so moving on to a multiplayer game, we have Rumbo. Now this was a downloadable game uh, from 13 AM Games, and if you'll remember, uh, in the first ever video I did when I was doing my top uh, games of 2016, or 2015, sorry, um, I talked about this game and I said how it was really creative, it really kind of, it had this very new concept, the background changed colour, and then when it changed colour to say, for example, uh, pink, all the pink platforms would disappear and you'd fall through them. Or when it changed to green, all the green platforms would disappear and you'd fall through them if you tried to jump on them. Uh, and that's kind of a very interesting mechanic. What's also very cool about it is it had nine player multiplayer. Uh, and this uh, was very fun. Uh, I didn't ever get to play it with nine people, in fact I don't even think I ever got to play it with more than four people, but with four people it was still pretty fun. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're just racing through these levels. Um, it's a, basically a platformer race. Um, the mechanics are slightly floaty, but I think overall the game is really fun. It's got a ton of content. All the modes are playable in multiplayer. And I really like the music as well and the art and everything. Uh, and I think you can kind of get over the mechanics when you're playing it in multiplayer. When you're playing it in single player, that's when it starts to get you, when it starts to hit you, that these mechanics are maybe a bit uh, unrefined, the just jumping and everything, the general game feel. Uh, but other than that, I think the game is very creative, and I'd really like to see what 13AM uh, Games, which are the developer, does next, because uh, they just seem to have a very keen eye for like weird wacky multiplayer stuff uh, so yeah keep an eye on them so next moving on to another game with a crazy art style is uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush now I've already done a review of this game um, which is quite old I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching it uh, suffice it to say it's a sequel to Kirby Canvas Curse which came out on the DS uh, and it was basically done in an effort to find something interesting to do with the gamepad. Now, you can only play it on the gamepad, so, you know, uh, you're not really looking at the TV that much, unless you're playing uh, in multiplayer, because you can actually have other people who control little waddle dees with spears. They can kind of platform along um, on the TV and everything. But the game is still gorgeous, even on the gamepad screen. It's also got lovely, carefree kind of like music and everything. And I really like also the way uh, the collectibles are handled in this game. Because what you get is instead of just getting, you know, generic, random, like, oh, you've got so many jigsaw pieces or whatever, uh, you're actually getting these cool uh, statues that are claymation versions of Kirby uh, characters from the past and from this game. Uh, and you can also uh, unlock all this music all the way through from all of Kirby's past. It's like a Greatest Hits album. I mean, even if they did release a Greatest Hits album from Kirby, which I think there is one out there somewhere, um, it wouldn't be this good because this just covers such a breadth of the music throughout the Kirby series. And I think anyone who is interested in the Kirby series will really love it. Um, so that was Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush. Uh, coming in with our next entry, we have uh, another 2016 game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. Um, such a difficult name to say. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but saying Tokyo Mirage Sessions just seems to like be really difficult <laughs> to kind of verbalize. Uh, it's not that sessions is a particularly difficult word, it's just when you put su such a myriad of syllables before it. But regardless, this is meant to be a crossover between Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem, but what it instead is, is really just a Persona game with some Fire Emblem characters as the Personas. Uh, and that is actually really fun. It's got a really unique battle style, uh, system, where basically, if you do a super effective attack, uh, your teammates will join in and depending on if they have an appropriate attack uh, you can really rack up a lot of damage on enemies uh, which introduces quite an element of uh, strategy 
it's also just unabashedly insane. I love just the vibrancy of the colors and everything. I'm not even that mad into the J-pop music and everything, but you just get so invested in this like world because it's just so really unashamedly Japanese. Like it is not bowing to any sort of uh, you know discontent you have with it, uh, which I think is great. Um, so yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is just a really surprisingly fun game. Um, I think it was actually quite successful for a game of its uh, genre and style um, on the Wii U, and that's why it's going to be getting, uh, the Switch is going to be getting uh, Shin Miyagami Tensei, the next entry in that series, uh, which I think is probably due to the fact that you know, Tokyo Mirage Sessions did so well just on the Wii U even, which only had an install base of 13 million. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think that will be um, an interesting game to look forward to, but Tokyo Mirage Sessions in the meantime is just a really crazy, really fun world to get absorbed in. I really think uh, it's worth a try. I, I really think you should try and get past like this whole you know, the crazy J-pop aesthetic, it is just as offensive as you think it is, and that is what's so great about it, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so yeah, moving on, we have Pokémon uh, Tournament for the Wii U. Now this is, this came out uh, 2016 as well, uh, it was from Namco Bandai, and they really knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, it is not necessarily the simplest fighting game, but it is very interesting. It's got a nice little triangle of um, blocks, grabs, and uh, just standard attacks. And the way that works is very similar to how type advantages work in Pokemon, so actually it really fits uh, this particular game. Uh, the phase switching mechanic is also kind of cool. It means you go from these kind of 3D uh, Pokemon anime style battles uh, to uh, these 2D battles. Uh, the 2D battles are really where the meat of the experience takes place. Uh, the field phase is literally just to trigger uh, the dual phase as they call it. Um, and it's just really fun to kind of mess about with because there's so many little intricacies and complexities. Uh, plus also the graphics are ridiculous. They're really like realistic which is kind of strange to see for Pokemon. Uh, seeing Lucario with actual, like, realistic fur. It's the same with, if you look at Pikachu, he's suddenly, you can see the way his texture is more detailed than it usually is. But I think it kind of uh, fits the fact that this is maybe a slightly grittier Pokemon game. Uh, only thing I would say, the story is complete trash. The core fighting is so good that if you get into it, while it is kind of, it seems a bit impregnable at the start, it's actually kind of easy to get into. Um, once you just sit back and you actually kind of like take a look at, at how each individual bit works uh, and you can even watch uh, my review of it, I kind of detail uh, a lot of the key points about the combat system in that. Um, and yeah, it's just a really uh, interesting game and I think uh, a testament to that is the fact that at, at EVO this year um, they actually had this game featured. Um, and it nearly actually uh, won out in the charity donations or something like that, I think I heard. Um, don't quote me on that though. Uh, but it, it did very well. Uh, didn't quite make it, but you know, it is what it is. You, you know, you can't necessarily compete with uh, some of the uh, established fighting giants straight out of the gate. You know, it, it'll take a while before the Pokemon tournament scene builds up enough, but it's certainly uh, having a good time of it out of the gate. So, we're two from the end of um, our number 30 to number 21, uh, and here coming in at uh, 22, New Super Luigi Bros. Uh, this is an interesting uh, game to talk about, because actually technically it's DLC for New Super Mario Bros. U which was kind of just a standard new Super Mario Bros game. And I know people might say when they look at this, oh my goodness, it's just a new Super Mario Bros game. What's the big deal? This game really changes the dynamic of it though. It takes, you know, all the assets from new Super Mario Bros and all the concepts 
and mixes them up. Um, this is definitely a game for people who've been playing Mario for a while. It's very difficult. It's also got uh, 100 second time limits on each of the levels, which means they don't have any flagpoles or anything. It's just about sprinting to the end and trying to get there as fast as possible. And then if you're really crazy, you can try and get all the uh, big coins because that just puts extra challenge on top of it. It is just one of the most challenging platformers that Nintendo has made in years. And I just, I really enjoyed it when I first played it on the Wii U. Uh, plus also just HD does actually make the new Super Mario Bros style look kind of better. Uh, I know when you look at it on New Super Mario Bros. 2, for example, it, it looks like it's starting to wane and it's starting to get a bit samey and whatever. The HD really did give it a lift. I do hope that they don't necessarily go back to the New Super Mario Bros. style. I'd like to see them take 2D Mario in a different direction. Um, and I think this is testament that at least if you mix up the gameplay a bit, it can really, you know, make a difference. It's not just like another New Super Mario Bros. game. This is very much a game that it feels like a Luigi, a new Super Luigi game, not a new Super Mario Bros. game. Uh, so, yeah. So coming in here at number 21, and some people may feel this game got uh, shortchanged, but I think it's still pretty high, is Fast Racing Neo. Uh, this game came out in 2015. I gave it my Racer of the Year in my first ever video, please. Just don't watch that video, uh, but anyway, uh, regardless, this game looks gorgeous. It really does blow your socks off. And I can't wait now seeing that uh, there's Fast Remix, which is basically uh, a redone version of this that runs on 1080p coming out for the Switch at launch. When they say it's Fast Racing, they are not joking around. Um, I'm not sure if it ever quite reaches F-Zero GX levels of insanity, but it certainly gets close. And it also has the announcer from F-Zero GX, so if you like that game and you just want a bit of super fast anti-grav racing, and you don't care that the game's a bit, maybe, not the most full of personality, um, then this game will knock your socks off, because it has beautiful graphics, it has great track design, and it has a nice unique twist that just changes up the gameplay just enough, in my opinion. Uh, so that's the first part of this series. Uh, thank you so much for watching and please tune in next time uh, where I'll be counting down number 20 through number 11. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already.